Hello there future ACCAs, this is Vishnu Vijay, proud fin trammer and in this session we'll be discussing one of the most important things that you have to do in order to get your ACCA membership that is to record your practical experience requirement or in other words PER. So what exactly is PER? How do we record them? What exactly uh, is performance objectives? How do we satisfy them? All these questions will be answered in this particular session. Now, let's get started, shall we? So when we talk about PER, there are two aspects to consider here. One, we will have to record the time that has been spent on a particular employer. And secondly, we have to satisfy some of the performance objectives which are provided by ACCA. And both of these things should be approved by a qualified professional. So, how exactly do we record the time aspect? Let me show you that, shall we? As you can see here, we have the wonderful homepage of ACCA. And the first thing that you have to do here is basically to sign in to your My ACCA account. So let me just quickly input my credentials, and then we can continue. There we go. So now that I'm signed in, the next thing that I have to do is basically to go to this particular option right here. Click on my qualification and the status of your qualification will be shown in this page. As you can see here, I've completed all my exams. I've completed the ethics and professional skills module. All that is left for me to do is basically to fill in the PER. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and record my experience in the my experience tool as simple as that and as i've mentioned earlier we have two parts to the per one i have to record the months in the relevant role that i worked for and secondly i have to satisfy nine performance objectives we will get into that first of all let's record the months shall we so just click on the my experience launchpad There you have it. Just scroll down a bit. There we go. So in this page, you will have to complete the PER by recording 36 months of supervised experience in a relevant accounting or finance role. So that actually gives rise to another question, isn't it? What exactly is considered as a relevant role? Now, when we learn through the syllabus of ACC, we learn about a lot of things in relation to accounting, in relation to finance, taxation, audit, etc. Isn't it? So, any role which incorporates these things is considered as a relevant role, as simple as that. Are you an auditor? Yes, great. Then your job role will be considered as a relevant role. If you work in the taxation field as a tax professional, then yet again, it will be considered. Uh, and same goes for an accountant, obviously, management accountant, as well as a particular finance professional as well. So what you have to keep in mind here is this. A relevant role can be a one particular full time job or it could also be a part of your responsibility as well. If a part of your responsibility is in relation to managing the accounts or preparing some aspects of the financial statements, etc., then you can yet again consider that particular job as a relevant role here. However, there are certain catch to it. Okay, folks, so let's take a look at as to what I mean here, shall we? So let me just quickly input some data here and then we can move on to the next stage. There you have it. So now that I've filled in my employer's details, the next thing that I have to do is basically to provide my job related details. What exactly was my designation in the organization? When did I start it? When did I end it? How many hours do I work? Uh, and what is what exactly is the percentage of relevant role? Now, this is basically the area that we have to look at carefully. So as I mentioned earlier, if a part of your responsibility has been contributed to do some accounts or finance related work, then you can just showcase the particular percentage of relevant role here. If a minority of the uh, job role is uh, dedicated to the relevant role, then you can just uh, 
select either 30 or 40 percent depending upon the weightage of responsibilities that you have in relation to that role as simple as that so let me just discuss another really important factor as well when it comes to the per you can also record part-time jobs as well if you have worked as a part-time accountant for an organization then that particular experience will also be counted towards this particular PER or this particular uh, 36 months that we record in the PER. Okay, folks, so keep this in mind as well. And another question that you may have to answer is as to whether this particular employer is an ACCA approved employer or not. So what exactly is the difference between an ACCA approved employer? What exactly is the benefit of working for an ACCA approved employer? Let's talk about that, shall we? So, folks, if you're working for an ACC approved employer, then five out of your nine performance objectives will get exempted. Okay, folks, so that's basically one of the great advantages. And if let's say that you're not working for an ACC approved employer, then you can still satisfy those five objectives. However, you may be required to write a 500 words worth of paragraph demonstrating how you've achieved that uh, perform particular performance objective. Okay, folks, so that is basically the difference between working for an ACC approved employer or a non ACC approved employer as well. Okay, folks, so keep this in mind. Now, mm, seems you're liking this video. If yes, then why don't you subscribe to our channel, Fintram Global, and press the bell icon. Also, do press the like, it really motivates us, and share it with all your friends who would love to watch this. Going on to the next aspect, we have the fact as to whether the role is an audit role or not, or is it a lecturing role as well. So I'm just going to quickly fill in the details here. Let's say that I am an ACCA tutor, and I've started working from this particular date till this date. So let's say that I've started working from, okay, the start date should be a bit different. There we go. Let's see, October or November, there we go, November uh, 2020 till the current date. And let's say that I've worked for a part-time basis as well. Let's say 20 hours per week. And I'm just going to record the percentage as 100% since I'm a lecturer of ACCA. And I worked for years as an approved employer as well. It's not an audit role, it's a tutor. And let's say that I'm selecting it as a lecturing role. So folks, the idea here is that if you are an ACCA lecturer, then up to 12 months will be counted as part of your practical experience. Okay, folks, nothing more, just 12 months. Even if you worked for, let's say, two years or three years as a ACCA lecturer, only one year would be counted as part of your PER. Because every tutor should have some professional experience in order to become an ACCA member. Okay, folks, so that's basically the idea here. Now, so I'm just going to click on save and next over here. Okay, so there's a slight mismatch in date. So let me just fix that quickly. And there you have it. So folks, the next detail that I have to fill out is basically the details in relation to my supervisor. Okay, folks, so who exactly is the supervisor? Your practical experience supervisor needs to do two things here. One, he should sign off your time in a relevant role. And he should also sign off your performance objectives as well. Okay, folks, so this is basically it. So you can't just provide the information to ACCA. You need to get this approved by a supervisor. Now, whom should the supervisor be? We will get into that. But before that, what all details should we provide? Let's take a look. We need to provide the first name, last name, as well as email address. And then we have to provide the relationship as well. Okay, folks, so what exactly or who exactly can be a supervisor? Let's talk about that, shall we? So there are four types of relationships that you can provide here. Let's talk about each of these. First of all, your supervisor can be a qualified line manager or in other words, an IFAC qualified line manager. What this basically means is that 
your supervisor is basically your direct line manager and this particular individual is a qualified accountant of a professional body. This professional body can be ACCA as well as various other professional bodies such as CPA, CIMA, CMA, Indian CA, etc. Okay, folks, so remember that. So that is basically as to what the first option is all about. Now, moving on to the second aspect, which is non-IFAC qualified line manager. So, folks, this particular option is basically when your direct line manager is not qualified. Okay, folks. What's the situation here? Your line manager is not a qualified accountant. He's not a member of any professional body. In such a situation, here's what you need to do. You can select this option as a relationship. And then what you can do is you can register your unqualified line manager. And then he can approve the time that you work within the organization. However, he cannot sign off your performance objective. If you want to get your performance objective signed off, then what you would have to do is you just have to provide or you just have to find a second qualified accountant and get them to sign off. Okay, folks, so that's basically the idea here. So you use the unqualified line manager to sign off the time within the organization and use a you use a qualified accountant to sign off your performance objective. That is what this second option is all about. Now, Moving on to another option, which makes a bit more sense and it's a bit more easier than the uh, second option. So let's take a look at that. So this is basically when you use an IFAC qualified internal supervisor. So who is an IFAC qualified internal supervisor? So folks, this is basically a situation where yet again, your direct line manager is not a qualified accountant. So what you do is you let's say let's consider a situation here as an example. Shall we? Let's say that you are working in the audit field and you are an audit staff. So, uh, so you get you try to reach out to your senior in order to sign off your PER. If your senior is not a qualified accountant, then can you get your PER signed off? No, not really, isn't it? He may uh, be able to sign off your time. However, he cannot sign off your performance objective. Okay, folks, in such a situation, what you can do is you can reach out to your manager or maybe even senior manager to get your PER signed off. Why? Because, well, it's an, it's an, it's an audit field. So basically, your manager or senior manager will be a qualified accountant. Okay, folks? And he has to be a qualified accountant for that matter. Okay, folks? So remember that. So this is what this third route is all about. Okay, folks? Uh, what is the situation here? Your direct line manager is not qualified. So you reach out to a superior who is qualified within your organization. Okay, folks, so that is what this third option is all about. Moving on to the next option, that is IFAC qualified external supervisor. So what exactly is this situation all about? Let's talk about that, shall we? So folks, I want you to consider a situation where there is no qualified accountant within your organization. In such a situation, what's the, what's the issue here? We can find an individual to sign off your time within the organization, yes. However, you cannot find an individual to sign off your performance objective, isn't it? So in such a situation, what you can do is, if there is no qualified accountant within your organization, then you can use the help of an external party, which could basically be the external auditor of your organization. Okay, folks? So this external auditor will obviously be a qualified professional, isn't it? So you can use their help to get your performance objectives signed off. So that is basically the idea behind uh, IFAC qualified external supervisor. As simple as that. Okay, folks? Now, a key aspect that you have to uh, understand regarding all these options is that the individual who signs off your PER, be it the time, be it the performance objective, they should have an idea of the nature of the job that you do. 
okay folks which is exactly why it's always great to find uh, a direct line manager who is a qualified accountant okay folks and of course everything is not under our control so sometimes maybe uh, our direct line manager may not be a qualified accountant however uh, what we can do is we can use the several other options that we have available as well okay folks so keep this in mind so that's basically the relationships that we can use or the kinds of supervisors that we can use and what else we should also provide the designation of the supervisor as well isn't it as simple as that after providing all these details you can just click on save and send invite so that a notification will be sent to your supervisor as simple as that okay folks so that's basically the idea regarding supervisor so i'm not gonna click on save and send as of now i'm just gonna skip this for now and then i will be taken to the per dashboard where the details that i've entered will be demonstrated as you can see here i have uh, the employer that i've worked with uh, and the time that i've worked with has been displayed in this particular pie chart now that's just the first aspect to it isn't it so now i should also take a look at the performance objectives as well so let's take a look at what all performance objectives we should satisfy in order to complete our per shall we so folks as we all know we need to satisfy nine performance objectives isn't it so there are two categories of performance objectives there are essential performance objectives which we mandatorily have to satisfy and then there are technical performance objectives which are kind of optional and you choose those depending upon your responsibility or uh, the field in which you work it or the relevant role that you work in okay folks so that's basically the basic idea here so out of these five essential objectives should be mandatorily satisfied so what are these five essential objectives let's take a look at that shall we so we have ethics and professionalism we have stakeholder relationship management strategy and innovation governance risk and control as well as leadership and management let's take a look at as to what each of these are shall we so i'm just going to click on the first objective right here there we go so let's read through the description it's kind of straightforward the fundamental principles of ethical behavior means you should always act in the wider public interest you need to take into account all relevant information and use professional judgment your personal values and skepticism to evaluate data and make decisions you identify right from wrong and escalate anything of concern you also need to make sure that your skills knowledge and behavior are up to date and allow you to be effective in your role well basically we just have to comply with the fundamental principles of ethics isn't it so that's basically the idea behind this particular objective now in order to satisfy this objective what you have to do is you just have to start this particular objective and then uh, click on claim in either of these elements which you have demonstrated as part of your uh, responsibility in your relevant role and then you just have to state how exactly you achieve this objective within the organization or within the role in uh, in between 200 to 500 words okay folks so that's basically the idea here just make sure that your statements include well it, it should be your own words first of all it should be clear and concise it should provide evidence and example to illustrate your experience within that particular organization you should avoid repetition or reference to other statements while writing these words and you should not provide any private or sensitive information in this and of course you have to be true and accurate and it should provide an accurate reflection of your work as well okay folks so that's basically the idea here now that's basically it just provide these details and you're good to go and of course you'll need to you know sign this off as well okay folks so remember that now moving on to the next aspect stakeholder relationship management so what's the big idea here let's take a look so when it comes to stakeholder relationship management we're just making sure as to whether you have met the expectations and needs of the stakeholders of your organization and have you developed and maintained business relationships have you used the have you effectively communicated with the stakeholders and you know managed their relationships etc all these things come under 
this particular objective so just start the objective by clicking on this particular option and then claim one of these elements which you think you have demonstrated as part of your responsibility and then write a statement on it okay folks so that's basically the idea here and then we move on to the third essential one which is basically strategy and innovation so what is strategy and innovation all about it's just just to make sure that you contribute to the wider business strategy of your organization through your personal as well as team objectives and you identify innovative ways to improve organizational performance if you have then we you know follow the same process as we did for the other objectives as well and the same goes for governance and uh, risk and control as well so this particular objective basically states as to whether you have complied with all the uh, corporate governance related policies laws and regulations and have you monitored or evaluated or implemented risk management procedures etc and finally we have leadership as well as management as a performance objective as well and this is where you manage yourself and use resources effectively and responsibly and you contribute to the leadership and management of your organization delivering what's needed by the stakeholders as well as the business especially when you're in a managerial role you can easily satisfy this particular objective isn't it so that's basically the idea here so that's basically the five essential performance objectives that you have to satisfy if you do not work for an ACC approved employer because if you do work for an ACC approved employer then these will get exempted okay folks all you have to do is you just have to provide a form known as the ACC approved employer form and just provide it to your organization and get it signed and then your five essential objectives will get exempted as simple as that if not if, it, if you haven't worked for an ACC approved employer then all you have to do is basically just you know get, get started with the objectives claim the particular responsibilities which you think you have uh, achieved while working in your role and then provide the, uh, a statement in between 200 to 500 words okay folks so that's basically the idea here now it's kind of much easier to you know work for an acc approved employer isn't it so there there's that as well now one thing that you have to keep in mind here is this okay folks so I want you to consider a situation where you haven't worked for a, in a relevant role. Okay, folks, let's say that you do have some work experience. You before even before applying for ACC, you do have some work experience. However, it's not of a relevant role. If that is the situation, then to a certain extent, you can provide that in your PER. Okay, folks. Now. Why exactly should we do that? Because I've already stated that non irrelevant roles does not necessarily contribute to the PER or, or does not necessarily contribute to the 36 months, does it? It doesn't. Okay, folks, the answer is it doesn't. However, you can achieve performance objectives from that particular role if it is of a, let's say, a managerial position or etc. Okay, folks, it depends upon the work that you've done. So you may not be able to get the time signed off from the particular irrelevant role that you worked in however you can get some of the performance objectives satisfied for example you can get your uh stakeholder relationship management objective satisfied or it could be strategy or innovation or it could be leadership and management if you were a management or uh, manager of certain or if you have managed a particular team etc okay folks so that's basically uh, some examples so that's basically one thing that you have to keep in mind you can uh, get these performance objectives signed off if you haven't worked in a relevant role okay folks so remember that however the one conditions relating to that is that obviously you would require a qualified accountant to sign it off isn't it so that's something that you have to keep in mind if you want to sign off the performance objectives you will mandatorily need to have a qualified accountant to do it okay folks so remember that so that's basically all about the essential performance objectives now moving on to the technical ones so since we've already satisfied five essential performance objectives we need to satisfy four more to get a total of nine isn't it however we have more than that okay folks we have a total of 17 technical objectives technical performance objectives that which we can satisfy however 
you can just satisfy the ones which you think is relevant to your job role. For example, if you work in the audit field, then definitely you can satisfy these three performance objectives, isn't it? If you are, let's say, an audit staff, then uh, you may have prepared for and planned the audit and assurance processes. That's uh, something that's obvious and that is something that's essential as part of your audit related aspects and responsibilities. And you may have collect, collected and uh, evaluated audit evidence. That's something that a normal auditor would do, isn't it? You may have reviewed and report on the findings of an audit or assurance engagement. So these three things are more suitable for an auditor, isn't it? So this is how you should satisfy your technical performance objectives. Just look for the objectives which is suitable for your relevant role, as simple as that. So if you're a tax professional, you can satisfy these objectives. Uh, if you're a management accountant, then these three. If you are working in the finance field, then definitely you can satisfy one of these as well. And if you are a normal accountant of a particular organization, you may be able to uh, satisfy these objectives. And of course, these two are some of the new performance objectives that has been added regarding advisory and consultancy. If you are in the business advisory field, then you can definitely satisfy this. And of course, if your work involves data analysis or other technical aspects, then you can satisfy data analysis and decision support related uh, objective as well. Okay, folks, so that is how you can choose your performance objective. Just choose one which is uh, closely in, in relation with your relevant role. That's basically how you, but keep in mind, guys, you have to select four of these. Okay, folks, so keep this in mind. And yet again, how exactly can you satisfy this? Just click on one of these and get started and then claim the particular responsibility which you think you have reflected and finally provide a brief statement or I would say a concise statement of 200 to 500 words. Okay, folks, so that is how you satisfy the performance objectives. So now I'm just going to go to the home page once again, which is basically the PER dashboard indicating the time that I've recorded as well as the PER objectives that I completed as well. And after getting both of these approved, both the time as well as the performance objectives approved, it will be reflected within your PER progress dashboard in your My ACCA account. And that, my dear friends, is basically how you complete your PER. It just has two aspects to it. One, the time. Get 36 months signed off and then satisfy nine performance objectives. As simple as that, isn't it? So when it comes to the time, you need to find an appropriate supervisor, not just the time, but also the performance objective. You need to find an appropriate supervisor to sign them off, which is a qualified accountant. And secondly, when we talk about the PER, five of them are essential uh, performance objectives, isn't it? You can get these exempted if you work for an ACCA approved employer after submitting an ACCA approved employer form, as simple as that. And remember guys, in order for this to get exempted, let me just add this on additionally as well. Just make sure that the employer that you're working for is either a gold or platinum ACCA approved employer uh, in order to get these exemption. Okay folks, so remember that. So. That's basically all about the essential PO and then we have 17 technical POs as well, isn't it? So we satisfy these depending upon our job role, isn't it? So it all depends upon the relevant role that we are in, as simple as that. Okay, folks, so that is basically all about PER and after this, you will definitely be eligible for the ACCA membership that you've been working so hard for. Okay, folks, assuming, of course, that you've completed all the exams as well as the ethics and professional skills module as well. So that's all about PER. And I know that some of you may have some specific question, which is really specific to your uh, individual situation. So feel free to put those in the comment box and we're happy to answer those as well. So that's all that I wanted to cover in this particular session. Stay tuned for more informative videos and subscribe to our channel. This is Vishnu Vijay signing off for now. Thank you.